Hello and welcome to another video on Microsoft Fabric. And in today's video, we are going to have a look at One Lake Explorer. One Lake Explorer can be installed on Windows and it acts like a file explorer where we will be able to travel through our lake houses, warehouses, see what all files are there. We can copy those files to our local system. We can copy local files to the One Lake. So let's install one lake. I already have one lake installed on my system. So I'm going to show you that first. So this is already my one lake is installed. But what I want is the newer version of the one lake. So for that, what I'm going to do is let me show you how to download and install. And in this process, I'll update my. So you have to go ahead and type one lake explorer on any search engine and you will get this link one lake file explorer. Click and open on this link. Once you click and open, you will get this link, which I've already opened and you will find uh, the information about One Lake Explorer. It explains what is One Lake Explorer and its feature. And then if you further go down, it do give you a link to download One Lake File Explorer. I'm right clicking on this and saying open in new tab. Once it is open, I can click on download. And it will start downloading. I have already downloaded the one where I'm going to click and it will open a window for me. For you, it will be an installation. For me, it would be an update. So I'll say update. And it will start updating the my one lake file explorer and I'll say launch once red when ready is already checked in. So whenever the installation will finish, I'm expecting it to launch. One Lake Explorer is successfully installed and now it is asking me to sign in. So I need to sign in to One Lake Explorer. I'm using my login, organizational login to sign in here. And once I click in sign in, if might ask for your password and it will log in. And once it log in, it will start showing an icon in the notification area. So now let's look at the uh, notification area. If you go here, you will see this uh, icon of one lake. Now you can right click here and you can choose uh, the account. You can click here and you can sign out and you can sign in into your new account. So in case you need a new different account. Now a few more things are available here. You can right click here and say diagnosis enable tracing. You can exit it. You can open the folder and you can go about. Now if you are logging in first time you are not aware where the folder is. You just click here and you will be able to open the folder. Now once you are able to open the folder you will be able to navigate through your one leg. Now here, if you remember, I have 01 fabric workspace. I have 02 Hindi workspace. I have 01 webinar workspace. I'm able to see these workspaces. Inside that workspace, I have this lake 02 lake house. So lake 02 dot lake house. This is how it is showing. If it is in a warehouse, it will show dot warehouse. Data warehouse. Okay. So 02 lake house is something which I have and I am able to into this and I can see my files now. Here I can, if I want, I can copy paste and download this file. I can upload this file. So let's see how do we copy the file? What happens when we delete the files? And can we add additional data to a CSV file, which is present um, and will it get updated? So what I've done now is I have opened my one lake and my data folder where from where I want to copy the file side by side. So this is one lake lake house 02. And I also opened lake house 02 on my Microsoft fabric. So show, let me show you how I done it. So first of all, I went to app.powerbi.com, which is also Microsoft fabric. Now, once I went there, I went to my workspace, which is there is an icon for workspaces. And inside these workspace, I have my 01 fabric workspace. I clicked on this and open my 01 fabric workspace and inside 01 fabric workspace, I have lake 02, which I have also shown you on the desktop. Now I went here, I click on lake 02, which will open lake house explorer for me. 
now we have the lake house explorer we can see the files here now let's go back to our file explorers and let's try to copy a couple of files so i'm going to copy these two files and going to drag and drop them here now you can see they are refreshing right now now let me refresh the folder and now you can see they are in sync these are the file from the cloud and these are the file which we have locally loaded and they are in sync now. Now the thing which I wanted to show you that let's go to the Lakehouse Explorer on app.powerbi.com and check out what has happened. So I go back here, I click on these three dots of the file and I have a refresh there which I'm going to click now. Once I refresh you can see both the files are available here. Now let me do one thing. Let me delete the geography file from here. Now let me go back to the Windows Explorer and see what happens. Now I will go ahead and refresh it. Now this, I, this is one observation I had that this file did not get deleted. It continued to show sync and I even has tried right click on the one lake and sync from one lake and it did not sync properly. Then what I have done, I tried the second stuff. I clicked on both these files and I say shift delete or I can also press delete. These both files got deleted from here. Now time has come that I go back to my Lakehouse Explorer and refresh it. I'm explore. I'm refreshing my Lakehouse Explorer and wanted to see that the files which I have deleted from Windows File Explorer are they deleted here or not. So if I go to the files of my Lakehouse Explorer, I see both the files are deleted. Seems like there is a bug when you delete it from here, it does not get synced properly there. Now what I wanted to do here is again, I want to put back the file. So this time I'm only going to put the file which is item. So let me click only on item, drag it and drop it here. Now it got synced pretty quickly. Now let me go to the file explorer which is lakehouse explorer and in the lakehouse explorer let me refresh and see my item file now i can click on my item file and view its data so what i've done i've clicked on the item file and you can see that i have 55 items 56 row because one row is header and i have 55 items here now i can click back on the file here on the top and go back but let me keep this file open here and let me do one thing. Let me go back to my Windows File Explorer. And in Windows File Explorer, I'm going to open this item file. And I'm going to open on this Excel. So what I am planning right now is on my other windows, the Excel is opening. Let me bring it here. I am planning to add a new item in this file. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to add one row here. This is row 56. I'm going to call is item 56 and rest of the things is going to be same. So let me save this file. I have saved this file and let me go back to my lake. Now I will click back on my files here, come to the item file and let me go ahead and here and press refresh so on the file three dots i am going and press go ahead and press this refresh let me refresh let me open the item file again scroll down you can see row 57 having data for item 56 one row is ahead because of the headers if you remember so we are getting the additional row. it means the data which i have updated is coming here. Now you have lot many possibilities to do that. Now I know I can copy the file, I can delete the file and I can explore the files. Now if you go to the file explorer, let's continue to explore. Let's say what happens when we have the tables. So if you go to the tables, you will see the Delta Parquet files here. Do not disturb anything from your windows because Delta Parquet store a JSON file and it is store the files into the Delta format. 
so this is your delta file and then there is a json file so this is parquet file and then there is a json file which is in the delta log and this combinedly is creating a delta parquet format so all the tables are stored in a delta parquet format and you will be able to observe now the reason you are not seeing this sales db2 dot parquet as a sales table because it's a simple parquet file it is not a delta parquet file so in the tables we will only be able to see it as a table if it is a delta parquet and that is why we are saying in the one lake if it is a delta parquet we can treat it as the if table so delta parquet files are treated as a table in the one lake and you can see that structure out here so now you know what structure it is how it is stored something which is not easily visible to you when you are looking from the lake house explorer now there are a few other folders internal folders which you should also be able to view my advice would be do not touch any folder which you are not aware of do not delete any file you have lot of control out here i am a workspace admin for this so i am able to do all the operations so please restrict your permission to the users who can accidentally do some operations now to tell you how powerful it is let me go back to the lake house 02 and to the files and show you what files right now i have now i have written a python code to transfer a file from my data folder data csv folder to this folder and that for that let me open my vs code now i am opening my vs code which was studio code and here i have written this code and please remember this is just simple windows to windows copy code no login no authentication token generation nothing is there simple code and i got it from scott from chat gpt i just changed my source file names here and i have given this double slash because backslash is something which you give then it can cause error so double backslash i have given and this is just a file utility in python to copy file from source to destination this is my source this is my destination this is my one lake destination simple as simple as this code order 2.csv i am trying to copy and i'm going to push it to the lake house let me run this code just one line of code if you ask me this is the most important i can actually give this just copy file source and destination i can remove all these error handling import sh util and i'm done let me run this code and i have run without debugging here on the top i'm or i can use control f file so i'm going to do that and just few seconds the code has completed the file has been copied let's go to the windows file explorer first and refresh it you can see the file here and it is already showing syncing let's go to the one lake explorer i go to the one lake explorer i one file is already open so i click on files now let me go to the three dots and refresh and once i refresh you are able to see order 2.csv here this is the same file as sales.csv which you might have seen quite a few time or retail fabric.csv is very similar to this one you can download those files from my github account for these experiment and can transfer these and check it out but look how powerful it is now there is no code no authentication nothing is there you are logged in into one lake explorer and it is acting like a local folder i am able to copy my data from here to there directly with the simple possible code from that machine now you need to be more careful to give the permissions to the user who can do these operations so please go ahead and try this code out do let me know your comments on what you think about this powerful tool in your hand one lake explorer thanks for watching this video thank you